Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking introverted intuition. And when introverted intuition is used highly as it is when it is the dominant function, it becomes your primary concern in life. Everything is about riddles and mysteries and puzzles and theories. The world is not approached as it is, but it is a question of what you can come to understand through contemplation, philosophy, study and abstraction. You, s you think about the world, you know, the thing is you're never really there, you're never really present, you're never really attentive. Having dominant introverted intuition roughly means having inferior or repressed extroverted sensing it means extroverted sensing has to go in the bottom slot it means that you are never really able to be and fully attend your, to the world around you you don't have time to listen to other people you don't have time to gather new data you don't have time to take in the situation to study your surroundings to keep up with everything that is happening around you because you are lost in a world of your own so the problem these types tend to have is they tend to become very isolated. The more you pull back from the world to study it from the distance that you seek, the more distant you become towards your friends and family members. And here it becomes difficult with relationships even. Often these types tend to become isolated and eccentric. You know, their sense of humor, their interests, their mannerisms are never directed towards the world around them. It's never, they never seem to care or pay any attention to or have any interest for other people's lives and actions and activities and for events and parties and for, you know, everything that's happening around them. Rather, their studies are focused on things that are theoretical in their nature. And these types are their philosophers. They often tend to be seen as wise and insightful. They tend to have a lot of knowledge and wisdom about how the world is and how the world should be. They get, they observe, they are observers. They observe what the world is and how to explain it from a position of, their imagination. Everything here is uh, a laboratory world that they have developed inside a concept, a theory, a framework, an abstract mental model that will help them answer the problems that describe the world around them. Now I've talked a lot about how INFPs and INTPs often have introverted intuition as their flow function. And what I mean here is there's a difference between having a flow function and a dominant function. When introverted intuition is your flow function, it gives you like this position of comfort and peace and calm. So INFPs and INTPs, as well as INTJs and INFJs, all tend to say that through the pursuit of introverted intuition, they experience a position of comfort and calm and stability and control. This kind of world, these answers they formulate true introverted intuition, give a sense of relief and a sense of energy that can help you deal with and stave off existential angst. So existential anxiety, that is often something you have to deal with a lot when you're an introverted intuitive. It comes from, you know, those questions that you have in your life that, you know, uh, keep hitting at you like why are we here why are we doing what we're doing what is the point what is the meaning of life what is it that will make me ultimately happy you know what kind of life should I have how should I live how should I treat other people no it's not always about ethics you know that's if you're more gravitating towards introverted feeling uh, rather than introverted thinking but it's about in flow gaining a sense of comfort through being able to provide answers, not just to yourself, but also to other people. The introverted intuitive seeks to answer the mysteries of the world around them. And when they are caught up with the problem or when they become uncomfortable or when reality becomes too much for them or when situation becomes too intense, when people start to pressure them or demand attention from them, when people and the world around them becomes more rough and harsh, they are more likely to retreat inwardly, like they are more likely to be cautious 
they are more likely to withdraw they are more likely to withdraw but to stay open it is not that they become more fixated and more set in their ways but it is that they reach a sense of heightened openness from a distance they would reach a position of heightened openness to consider every perspective they retreat to consider every perspective and every viewpoint to see everyone's side of the story to understand what it's like from different perspectives how is it like from M e uh, Emily's side what is it like for Patrick what is it like for Carla you go over these scenarios all the time where you know where you think through a situation and when you think through an issue and when you think through life itself you know because often the questions you ask they are more conceptual than anything else but it is the answers ultimately that make this type feel sense of flow and uh, peace of mind and it is different than when for example an extroverted sensor you know when you're an extroverted sensor it's often that introverted intuition becomes a position of anxiety you know those questions and uh, those answers they never make you happy fundamentally you never feel happier as an ESTP or an ESFP finding answers to these questions you know the questions that are purely theoretical the questions that are purely philosophical why are we here I don't know I uh, often what you feel as an ESTP or ESFP is these questions will can sometimes haunt you you can feel haunted by these questions you know constantly like why am I here why am I doing what I'm doing why do I live like this why do I do these things then it's prods and prize at your self-awareness as an ESTP and it tells you constantly go inside think about these matters but often it's met by a defiance like no I won't I don't have time for this I refuse when introverted intuition is the inferior rather than the dominant function it is uh, associated with hiding from questions that you don't want to deal with no no they're unimportant I don't want to think about this this is stupid who wants to think about these things nobody cares you know why do we have philosophy? Why should we teach philosophy at school? Why should people think about things when life is here to tell us what things are and what things should be? When you can go out and find out for yourself. Why should we sit down and open books? And why should we go down and dream about things? Why should we go into a cave and sit by ourselves and meditate and contemplate on perspectives when we could just simply just go out and ask people ourselves and yeah if you're a dominant introverted intuitive I think you're very well suited to answer that question I think you can tell us a lot that you can never simply observe there are so many truths of life that you can never simply observe so many facts that you can never simply just know by seeing them by hearing them or by asking there are questions that we can only answer by going inside and by using our imagination and that's why introverted intuition is so valuable thanks everyone for watching and i hope to see you all in the next video